Um, I'm just going to quickly address this question, just to go back onto the Fortnite stuff. Um, the Monkey Boy asked, does Fortnite have to be an eSport? I saw that question, I really wanted to talk about that too. I'm glad you that isn't. That is, first of all, that is an exceptionally good question, because now we get branching into the, the sector of, does, do games have to have an eSport, or is it a wasted sort of venture, sort of business, like capitalist venture? Mm, and I, I think KB. I guess for me, like it, it comes down to a point of, of of whatever just happened to playing games for for the fun of playing games without it having to be something else. Like just because it is a you know a, a, a battle royale or a squad game or something like that, why yeah why why can't it just be what it is? Why does it have to be something else? Like people like playing it for what it is, and as you guys said before, you know making it into an eSport is extremely difficult because of so many variables. Yeah. Um, like, it's it, it, it's one of those things. Like, it, it's not a team-based game in the traditional sense of 5-on-5 five five or 6-on-6 six six or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I don't know. I just... What do you think, I, I think, yeah. Um, do you have anything? Well, I think... I've got a lot to say, so I'm just waiting for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's interesting. It's, an, it's a very interesting question, first of all, uh, first and foremost, because... KB's right. Whatever happened to just playing a game for the sake of playing a game? Like, it's it, it boils over into a whole heap of different topics. You know, people don't go to internet cafes for the sake of just playing games anymore. It, it all it all kind of comes all together. But to circle around to the question, does Fortnite have to be an esport? I actually don't think so. I don't think that Fortnite. I think they went about it the wrong sort of way. I don't think they needed to dive headfirst into the esports, going around screaming, we have $100 million in prize pool money that we're segregating just purely and only for Fortnite like tournament rewards. Um, and I would like to see them do more in terms of building their esports. Now that they've you know done all of that, they've already gone around and said we're doing all this stuff for our esports. But I, I don't think it needs to be an esport. I, I, th I don't think Battle Royale in general is a good topic or like congregated genre for esports the lifespan yeah. of the games is just too short games happen too long there's too many like unless we change the whole idea of going into a circle and then that circle getting yeah. progressively slower and slower until everyone's kind of clumped together in this mass mitosis cell of people it's just not a good healthy way to play an esports game no. And just so, before, just before Chris goes, I'm I just itching, the last thing go. I wanted to say <laughs> was um, that like I've played in a couple of COD blackout tournaments and they were just a mess, like an absolute yeah. schmozzle of waiting for other teams to finish, waiting, and it went on for hours, yeah, like absolute hours, and you just didn't want to play it anymore because it was just yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. So does Fortnite need to become an esports? So let's just talk about like do games. In general, need to become esports without bringing Fortnite into it. So, like, esports is basically just stuff. Like, if you're a gamer, <laughs> you gamer, you want to take it to the next level. You want to be competitive. You want to um, see if you're the best, right? That's how esports came about. It's been around for over 20 years. So, and back back then, like, no one was salaried. People were just playing tournaments because they love playing tournaments, and that's that's how it came about. And and still these days, um, that'll happen. You know, that'll happen whether the developer likes it or not. Um, yeah. Now, some developers can, can push against it. So look at um, Nintendo, for example. They, you know, actively, um, like, strike content creators from putting their, their Nintendo games on YouTube and stuff like that. They do not yeah. support the esports scene at all. No, they don't. And you can look at it another... Um, well, they don't... Games, I mean, like, just... Sorry to interrupt. I think Nintendo is a special case because I don't think it's that they don't support esports. I think it's that they don't support esports that they can't stay in control of. But they can if like, they want to. Like that's what I'm saying. They right? should be able to, but I feel like yeah. they aren't confident in their ability to stay on top of it all. So it's right, right yeah. was the right was the the founder. Right, they they were the first ones to realize that this uh, esports has a very strong marketing power and, and they lost money on esports for a long time and they probably still do. Um, yeah. but they, I think are smart enough to realize that by creating something that will outlast your game or will make your la game last a lot longer, you are in the, in the end, creating a lot more revenue 
through more people just playing for longer. So that's why I think every developer esports is the buzzword because they want their game to last and they want more people to mm. just play longer. And if if having a competitive scene that will last for five years is is that mechanism to do that, then you're going to support the the esports scene of your game. Now, yeah. like some developers force that, so you know and and most of them these days do right, and it doesn't work out because. It's also, it also comes back to the players. So if your game is not something where the players like playing competitively or they don't want to co- play competitively, in, unless you throw so much money at it where they'll just do it anyway, um, it's not going to happen. So that's, you know, does it need to be an esports? No, but do they, do Nothing they want in it to general. be an esports? Do they want yeah. it, Fortnite to be esports? Yes, because they're using it as another way to market. Um, and they've got enough money where they can just throw money into tournaments and it'll be an esport but is it the best one in my opinion no some people will disagree with me a lot of people watch it still you know even the last tournaments have tens of thousands of people watching so it's yeah. proven that you know you also need the viewers there to make it viable long term so it's showing that there's interest in it and and that'll happen with different games as well more games will come up maybe the developers aren't thinking about esports at all but the community will want it well, um, to happen yeah. so, so badly you... that they'll make their own tournaments. ESL will go and host everything, as long as the developer will allow that to happen. But at the end of the day, the developer owns all the rights. So yeah. they can stop mm-hmm. anything. And this is where esports is different to traditional sports, because no one owns basketball. No one owns soccer. Well, let right? me just interrupt really quickly, just <laughs> to clarify for you. Um, I think you might be a little confused on the whole developer owns everything part. I have experience working with a company. I'm not going to disclose who they are. When I was working in game dev as a programmer, it's very, very common for publishers to take rights to the IP. And not that I can speak for Nintendo. I know they're probably a lot more safely like set up than the small indie company I was working with. Yeah, but no, no, I hear what is, you're saying. Is, it is a lot more common than a, than a lot of people think, where yeah. game developers, after the game is released, after all the marketing is done, all the publishing is done, it is a lot more common for the developers to actually lose the access to their game, in yeah. any sense of the word, minus doing updates and, and content yeah. improvements. Uh, yeah, when, improve. I, when I said developer, I mean just not the organizers, not the yeah. players. Oh, okay. So, like, the publisher and or the developer. So, whoever owns the game, right? Yeah, no, I so get you. Whoever owns the IP can... can, can stop any tournaments um, they should if logically they be to. able to yeah should you know, definitely be able to. to they're not um, going to but, but it's possible right and um yeah but there's lots of different ways that you can run an esports scene from a developer perspective you can take like a hands-off approach like counter-strike until very recently um, yeah i feel really like that's actually esports at all they just kind of yeah they release Let updates every now and then they release new skins they just let yeah. they let all the third party organizers do whatever they want, mm-hmm. um, and then they do have like their own majors where they come in and they put in like a million dollars or however much it is, yeah. and they kind that of was, run that, but it's still run third party. Yeah, that was a real organic uh, exactly yeah evolution with with CS in esports like that just happened like that no one forced it it just appeared one day <laughs> like yeah well it appeared a very long time ago like but way before 1.6 there was still tournaments like it just wasn't they weren't being played for a million dollars but there were still people playing cs tournaments in in you know little school halls back in the year 2000 in before yeah that mm. so it's just a different scale now and that means that more people are looking at different models um of how to make it work and you know, whether you're a hands-on developer or like you want to be, you want to own everything. Like Blizzard, for example, they yeah. literally run everything. They want to everything to run how they want to run it. So they do their own tournaments. They set up their own studios. They, you know, they they even tell the teams how they have to brand. So yeah. you know, they they're it's... in control of literally everything. Um, mm. See, that's a little, in my opinion, that's over. That's massively overstepping the margin. In my experience, when you get to games, it's like you need, as a game developer, you wanna you wanna see an esports scene develop for your competitive game, but, and this is where I feel like a lot of developers sort of fall off. It's you need to have a good game first in order to have a successful esports scene. 
which is uh, it's pretty pretty no, you know, mean, no brainer. Yeah, it's a no brainer. Yeah. But it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. But I feel like a lot of over like a lot of developers nowadays are sort of overstepping that and kind of skipping that step. They're focusing less on making a working functional game that has the support to enable esports, and then letting like the third party uh, people run and do whatever they want. And instead, they're focusing on pretty much building for esports. They're just skipping the essential first step. And I feel like that's where a lot of like I'm scared that's where game development is going to go because I don't want that. <laughs> I don't think a lot well, of people would want that. Now we barely get finished games, so you know. Yeah, yeah. Like AAA, <laughs> these quote unquote AAA development games yeah. are just nowhere near the caliber that AAA used to be at. They're just not. I think Apex is like the prime example of how good it can be when you get it all right. Yeah, um, oh, 100%. You know, they yeah, they exactly. spent, like, that, that game just exploded instantly, and it's a combination of working hard behind the scenes before anything was announced. They worked with pro gamers like Shroud and um, BR gamers privately, um, making sure that everything was how they would do it, like fixing bugs and, you know, so that they, they kind of get a good feel for how they want their game to be before it's even announced. And then yeah. the biggest shock for me, was when they announced it, they said, oh, by the way, you can play it right now. It's not like you got to wait six months. You literally can play yeah. it right now. And then they already had lined up all the biggest influences. And, yeah. they, and I remember... It was just like, that was revolutionary, in my opinion. I remember yeah. when um, I first heard of Apex is because Shroud and Dr. Disrespect le like did some sleuthy marketing, said, we're going here, but we're not allowed to tell you what it's all about. Yeah, sort exactly. Of like, it's been, it was and, kind of teased for, for months. Like, people knew that it was it was happening. It was coming. Something was, was coming. there was no details. Like, no happening. one knew anything about, you know, the guns or the, the uh, you know, the, the players They pretty much knew nothing anything. until... Yeah, it was all hush-hush. It was all very hushed and very silent until uh, the stream uh, streamers, I think it was Shroud, Dr. Disrespect, I think it was Justin. Or, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Justin. Um... Until they went live when like went public with it, no, nothing was released. Yeah. It was very on the down low. And there was no server I mean, issues on the day, really. Um, like it in, has in, been. In Australia, I have to there give... is, but I mean, in the US and yeah. Europe, I don't think there were, no one was really complaining about that. It's um, been pretty pretty good since they launched it. Like consistently across the board, from a like a, a networking perspective, it's it's been pretty. And when good. you consider that it's a free game, so anyone can log on and, and download it yeah. and play, like. Your servers That's, have to have such a massive capacity. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I was really impressed with how they released that game in general and how polished it was, um, you know, from day one. And that was a big that's a big reason why it took off. Because can you imagine if it wasn't a good game, it wasn't finished, or you know there was lots of yeah. bugs and they still did this massive marketing campaign? It would it would it would have fell off because people would have played and realized mm. this is a shit game and they would never play again. And I, I think it's the one time where the developer team, like from uh, Respawn, like they're a good team. They're a good bunch of guys. They make good games. I think it's the one time they've had some pull with a publisher like EA to go, just let us give us time to do something. That's, and we mm. promise it'll pay off. Like, yeah. it'll be, and Maybe yeah. maybe this is a wake up call for EA to stay the fuck away from the game, and your well, game will be successful. <laughs> cough anthem, cough. <laughs> 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 uh, 